Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to remove and replace a freeze plug or a core plug. So in the automotive vernacular, freeze plug and core plug are used interchangeably. They are the same thing. They started getting called freeze plugs somewhere in maybe the 60s or so, because I think the idea was that if you didn't have the right ratio of coolant inside of your engine, the uh, you know water inside the engine would uh, freeze and as a result expand. And the idea was that the freeze plugs would somehow pop out and save the engine. I don't think it's ever happened in all of the history of humanity. What they're actually called is core plugs and they have to do more with the casting of the block, how it's actually casted out of iron. So I use the term freeze plugs and core plugs interchangeably in this video too. It's just a force of habit at this point, but I do mean the same thing. And quite frequently these core plugs fail and then coolant starts leaking everywhere and all over the ground. So what I don't show in this video is how to drain your coolant. That's going to be different per every make and model. So basically you need all the coolant drained out of the system and you need the block completely drained too. And sometimes they have like a little drain on the side of the block and you can get all the coolant out. However, when you take the core plug out, it is going to drop all the coolant out of the engine anyway. I just thought I'd mention that to you in case you weren't expecting it and you know, coolant your eyes is never fun. Also, core plugs are all over the engine. They're on the sides, they're on the back, sometimes they're in the front. It just kind of depends on make and model. There's just no way I can cover every single engine ever made and every single car ever made. You might have to pick the engine up. You might have to take an exhaust manifold out. Heck, you might even have to take a transmission out to get to a core plug. That's just kind of how it is. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're tough to get to, but I can't account for all of that, so I just did this video on an engine I had out of a car so you have a nice crystal clear look on exactly how to do this. With all that out of the way, let's jump in. So let's focus on freeze plug or core plug removal. And what you're gonna need is a, I use a nice long punch like this, but sometimes you know, you, you're gonna use a, a smaller, thinner punch and it just kind of depends on access um, and your specific situation, but all the rules still apply. The first rule is never hit it like this on the lip because if you gall the side of the block itself, you're gonna create a groove. And what do grooves do? They're going to leak coolant, which completely eliminates the point of replacing your core plug. So what we're gonna do is take your punch, put it in kind of the corner like this, and then we're just gonna keep start tapping it with a nice hammer, wear eye protection. until it falls into the block itself. So at this point, typically you can just kind of, you know, fish around in there and grab the core plug like this and bring it out. There we go. And check that out. Got the core plug out. Now, sometimes you'll run into a problem where this core plug is too thick. Like you can see the sides of this one is aftermarket. So these core plugs are actually pretty beef and uh, you won't necessarily be able to get it out. And that's OK. Just leave it in there. There's plenty of room for coolant to go around. Just leave it inside of the block. If you can't get it out, you know, you might be twisted in a pretzel trying to get it out and whatever. It's not that big of a deal to leave it in. It's completely fine. Now we have this removed. Let's go over how to replace it. So in the next thing I'm going to focus on is cleaning out this hole here. Now what you can do, and this is kind of an old school hot rod and trick is while you're taking out the freeze plug is, you know, it can kind of be in sideways and grab your channel locks and you can just use your old freeze plug to clean any kind of debris out of the hole here. Now you might be telling me, Oh, there's not enough room, it's too compact, it's too tight. Okay, no problem there. Just grab a piece of emery cloth or, you know, like really fine sandpaper and just go to town. Just clean that off and make sure you're able to get a nice, smooth, clean surface without creating any kind of huge gash. Just like that, and that's looking really nice and clean that up with some carburetor spray as well. And then I'm gonna hit with some carb spray or you can use brake clean and just clean that out with a clean towel. There you go. That looks like a million bucks. So here on my table is the official tool to replace a core plug or a freeze plug. And I will leave a link down below in the description, this exact tool. Now this is for if you are in a really awkward spot and you can't quite get to it with a, you know, what I would call the conventional means, which is using an impact socket that fits in the new freeze plug really well. And then you're not supposed to hit sockets. So I just kind of have this extension that I've used over the years and you can see it's all shroomed out. Um, and you can just use that and kind of tap it into the block, but you don't always have access. So that's why this tool exists. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to use both. So with our surface nice and clean, like before, I'm just gonna take some regular RTV, link down below in the description. And some people don't use RTV. 
I like using RTV for two reasons. First of all, it lubricates the plug a little bit, so it makes it a little bit easier to get the plug in. And then the second reason is just simple sealing. So I always wait until this RTV is nice and cured before putting water into the engine. That's also something to remember. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take our freeze plug and sit it in there as square as you possibly can. You always wanna keep the plug surface and the block surface perfectly parallel and then put our socket inside of the plug and then just give it some taps. So it starts going in. Now, as it goes in, it kind of wants to wander a little bit. So you're just gonna wanna kind of take it off and look at it and see if one side's going in faster than the other. And there we go, it looks pretty good. So how do you know when you're done? Well, what you're gonna look at is you'll see this beveled edge will basically stop becoming beveled and become straight up and down. Uh, right at the top of the lip of the plug, and then you know you're home. It should look just like this. Don't hammer it in any further, because if you hammer it in further, it'll just come out exactly the way that we did it earlier. So once it looks like this, you know you're all done. But what happens if you don't have enough clearance to get a socket in and a hammer and you know wind up and swing it? Well, that's what the special tool's for. I'm gonna show you exactly how to use that too. So we can take this appropriately sized piece and you can just size it right to the new plug. It doesn't always have to fit exactly like a press fit. It can be a teeny bit loose because the next size bigger is too big and won't fit. So this is, this is my piece. And then we have this collet piece with threads on it. And you can see that our bent piece is this way. So we're gonna go ahead and put our threads on this direction, slide it down, and then we can grab this piece of the tool and begin threading it. And the really cool part about this tool is you can change the angle, kind of has a gimbling effect like this, and that is really helpful for trying to get into tight places. So that trick I showed with the socket's really cool, but what if you can't quite get at it? Well, that's what the tool is made for I showed earlier. See, it's kind of bent at an angle. It makes it a little bit easier. Also, you might notice a little bit of frost on this freeze plug. I, another t cool tick tip I have for you is put this in the freezer for, I don't know, maybe half an hour. Make sure this is nice and cold. This is super cold. It is maybe 28 degrees in my hands. It's very cold. And then we're just gonna do the same thing. Set it in as perfectly square as we can. It is almost, it is almost where it needs to go just because it's so darn cold. So we can sneak our tool in. Just imagine this is in a car somewhere. You know, there's an exhaust manifold coming off, oil pan, something like that. And maybe you can kind of sneak the tool in like this, or maybe it'd be better if you came this way. But for instructional purposes, I'm gonna do it like this. I have a decent angle. And then give it a couple wax. There we go, making some progress, not quite there. So you notice this freeze plug hole doesn't even have a bevel to be lined up with. So what do you do? You just wanna make sure that this lip and this part of the engine are nice and even with each other. Actually, we went a little further, but that's okay. It can be this teeny tiny amount past. You just don't wanna hammer it through so that way, well, the plug falls into the engine. But this right here, this is aces. So that's how to replace a core plug in an engine. This is really basic, simple stuff that you can totally do at home, depending on your level of accessibility to the core plug itself. It is super simple, super straightforward, and I do recommend that RTV. Just make sure you let that RTV cure before you try to put water inside of the engine. Thank you so very much for watching. If you found this video helpful or interesting at all, please consider becoming a member or subscribing and liking the video. It really helps the channel out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.